good morning and welcome back. It has been a while since I have done a video and a lot of that is because I wrote a um, children's storybook and I've been really, really busy with that. It's a story coloring book, excuse me. Um, and it is, the intent is to guide children through the moving process. My brother and sister-in-law did such a great job with transitioning my nephew when they bought their home several months ago. And so it just made a really great story to share with other people, to give parents tips on maybe ideas of how to make it fun for the kids, as well as to get the kids excited about the move. And a portion of the proceeds go to Hope's Front Door, which is a charity in Downers Grove that helps people with basically everything except for rent and utilities. Um, and right now they have a great um, program for the holidays where they're doing like a coat and toy drive. They're doing giving Tuesday donations to feed kids for the week. And, um, and they're doing, um, they just have a bunch of different stuff that they're doing right now. And so I wanted to be able to, um, participate in that. And by purchasing a book, you get to as well. Anyway, not the point of this video uh, today. I really wanted to talk about multiple offers. Multiple offers are something that happens pretty commonly at a common price point, as well as a hot market. And so, it's really important to know when you're looking at a home that if you're certain that it's the right home for you, you really should put in an offer and you shouldn't wait because if you're taking a couple days to think about it, you need to remember that three days ago, somebody else looked at it and said the same thing. Will they put an offer in? I don't know. But the challenge with multiple offers is obviously only one person can have the home. Um, and so if we can move forward and be the first offer or the best offer, that's the way that we go ahead and get you the home that you fall, fell in love with. And so there's a few th different things to take into consideration. I would say one of the most important things is have your agent call the listing agent. When I know my client wants to write an offer, the first thing I'm doing is I'm on the phone with the listing agent. I wanna know, other than price, what is the most important thing to their client, the seller? Sometimes people are on a timeline, they need to get somewhere. And so if it's an occupied home and they need to move and I can offer them a 30 day close, odds are that we're going to be the best offer if another were to come in. Also, if it's an empty home, they're obviously paying a mortgage or taxes or both and have a holding cost of waiting to sell the home. And so if it's a vacant home, almost always a faster close is going to be the best option for them. Um, earnest money can make a little bit of a difference, but more often than not, it isn't the biggest lever you can pull. I would more so aim for things like if you can be a conventional buyer, be a conventional buyer. Even though FHA loans are great, they pretty much always have the same um, odds of getting to the closing table now. There's still a little bit of a stigma from when it was a little bit tougher. And so a conventional buyer on paper looks like a better buyer, whether they actually are or not. Um, a bigger down payment is another thing. Um, that is a huge, huge part of it. And so the more cash you have down, the just the easier it looks for the seller that you're, you're actually going to make it to the closing table. And so that's just a few things. I'm sure there's a few others. Um, every situation is a little bit different, but knowing what that difference is. Um, the other thing I would say is I always, like some people, the difference maker for them is that the people who are buying their home are people who are going to love it the way they did. And so I always submit a, especially, specifically if it's a multiple offer, if it's not, or it's an investment property, it may be a little bit different, but almost always there is a letter going with that offer. Either my buyer has written or I have written on their behalf based on what they told me about how they feel about the home to the seller. Sometimes the seller never sees the letter. Just to be honest, it's up to the listing agent's discretion if they give it to them. I hope that they do. And it's also a huge deal because even if the listing agent doesn't give it to the buyer, they may also read it themselves and they have a huge impact on how um, the, the seller decides that they're going to move forward. Um, and so just making the listing agent a fan of the agent, an agent with a good reputation of getting to the closing table is another way to make sure that you, you get the home that you want. You know, if I had a poor reputation, deals that fall apart, you know, the odds of that agent picking my offer, even if it's the best one on paper, aren't very high. However, if I'm an agent who, you know, especially an agent who's had a transaction with me, who knows I, I was on top of my stuff and we did everything on time, we made it to the closing table on time, my client, you know, was completely reasonable and coached well through it, they're gonna p have a better shot of picking my offer sometimes, even if it's not the best offer. And so the goal is to, like I said, be the best option in as many ways as possible for the seller. Because again, it's their home. It's also a business transaction. 
And so they need to walk away feeling like they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish with the sale of the home. And it's your agent's job to help you decide how to make them feel that way, how to create that feeling for them. So that's all I have for today. Let me know if you have any questions. I would be happy to answer them and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.